Villagers are the most OP item in Minecraft. In fact, they're so overpowered that they can literally fabricate enchanted diamond armor out of thin air. And if you use this right, you'll never have to mine again in Minecraft. Don't believe me? I turned this chest full of pumpkins into this box of loot right here using only villagers. Wow, if only there were a tutorial on how to do this. Well, funny you should ask that. Before we go into the advanced mechanics behind setting up a well-oiled capitalist machine, we first have to get a steady supply of workers. When you find a village, resist the immediate urge to burn. Instead, secure the villagers inside their homes or in a shallow hole to keep them away from possible threats such as hostile mobs, steep ledges, and thoughts of freedom. When you're ready to involuntarily hire them, use boats or minecarts to move them. Now you just need to turn a few villagers into a lot of villagers. But how? If you give two villagers enough bread, they'll make a baby villager if there's enough beds nearby. If you give a lot of villagers a lot of bread and a lot of beds, you'll get even more baby villagers. You can build a pretty easy villager breeding chamber just by making a floor of beds with enough space for the villagers to walk around. Consider using a dispenser system if you're too lazy to use the Q button. Also, in case you're wondering where I got this epic in-game cape, check out the link in the description below to find out how you can get this cape, along with a variety of free in-game capes using Mantle. Before we can move on, we need to be acquainted with the inner workings of the Mighty Villager and what makes them the most OP item in Minecraft. Some of this may seem obvious to experienced players, but I wouldn't be sharing this information if it weren't important for later on. Villagers, as you might have guessed, have trades, which are determined by these workstation blocks. If a villager can pathfind to a workstation, it will select it and become a specialized villager with traits. The pathfinding part will be important to remember for later on. When you trade with a villager, it will gain experience. By trading with a villager, enough times, you can unlock higher levels of trades. These high level trades offer more valuable items, many of which will be needed in our quest for enchanted diamond gear. There are also a few ways to lower the cost of villager trades. By allowing a zombie to attack and zombify a villager, you can cure it for a lifetime discount on that villager's traits. You can cure a villager by splashing it using a splash potion of weakness, then by right clicking while holding a golden apple. You can also lower the costs of trades by defeating a raid and getting the hero of the village effect. To do this, kill an illager patrol leader to receive the bad omen effect. If you enter a village with this effect, you'll start a raid. Defeat every level of the raid and you'll receive the hero of the village effect, which should last for two in-game days. Now that we know how villager trades work, we can start using them to our advantage by accumulating massive amounts of wealth at the environment's expense. We'll use this wealth later on to get pretty much everything you could possibly need in Minecraft using only villagers. First, we've got to build some pleasant working conditions for our villagers. To do this, we're going to use what we know about villager workstations and pathfinding to make the most optimal trading hall possible in Minecraft. You could have a comfortably sized room for each villager with all the comforts of home, but this is just horribly inefficient. For the optimal trading stall, allocate each villager just less than one block of space, using trapdoors between villagers to keep them in place. Place a slab or trap door in front of their face to prevent them from escaping so you can break and place workstations in front of them to get the right traits. If you have problems with villagers selecting the wrong workstations, you can put a full block of space between each stall to prevent them from pathfinding to other workstations. Now it's time to collect some emeralds. We'll be comparing each method based on how quickly they generate emeralds and how easy they are to obtain early game. Some generate a lot more than others, while others run automatically without any manual labor. A great way to get emeralds in the very beginning of your capitalist venture is by selling large quantities of sticks to Fletchers. This method is great early game, but becomes very tedious and ineffective later on when compared to the rest of these methods. Alternatively, if you really, really like sand, then fill a few shulker boxes with it, smelt it into glass, craft it into glass panes, and sell it to a small army of cartographer villagers for emeralds. This works especially well if you find a village in the desert, or if you just couldn't be bothered to make an automatic farm. If you prefer a more environmentally friendly solution that maybe doesn't involve stripping an entire landscape of resources, consider making an automatic pumpkin farm. They're incredibly easy to make, and you can sell pumpkins to farmers for an essentially infinite supply of emeralds. However, if you are a true capitalist at heart and you need more destruction to satisfy your inner corporate greed, then build an iron farm. You can trade iron to any kind of smithing villagers for a good amount of emeralds, all while watching thousands of iron golems die in the name of sweet, sweet capitalism.
Now that you've collected a sustainable supply of emeralds, it's time to use them to build the most powerful server economy crashing machine the world has ever seen. By using the right villagers and unlocking the right trades, you can easily manufacture dozens of sets of fully enchanted armor, tools, weapons, potion arrows, XP bottles, rare enchantment books, and more. Many of these items are difficult or impossible to obtain by other means. You could take the boring route and go mining for diamonds to craft into diamond gear, but why not have your unpaid interns do the work for you? By using the same smithing villagers you use to get emeralds from an iron farm, you can get trades for semi-enchanted diamond gear, weapons, and tools. To get diamond armor, you need to access the expert level trades of an armorsmith villager. To make a villager an armorsmith, give them a blast. Furnace. You won't notice any decent trades at first, as the first few levels consist of basic coal and unenchanted iron armor. However, if you put up with these trades and level up the villager, eventually, you'll be able to access semi-enchanted pieces of diamond armor. You can use a weaponsmith's expert level trades to get diamond axes and swords, similarly to how you'd use an armorsmith. Simply trade with the weaponsmith until you unlock these trades. You can make a weaponsmith using a grindstone. You can also get diamond tools such as pickaxes and shovels using a toolsmith created using a smithing table. Using smithing village you can get pretty much any kind of diamond tool or armor you'll need without mining a single diamond ore. However, these basic enchantments simply won't work for us. Let's get some enchantments. We'll use the humble librarian to get trades for every enchantment you'll ever need. Like we discussed earlier in the video, you can get a librarian villager by placing a lectern. However, you may notice the absolutely garbage enchantments you'll get at first. In order to find the enchantments you desire, you'll have to break and replace the lectern for an absurd amount of time. Don't worry, it's all worth it in the end. You can get the rare mending enchantment for as low as 10 emeralds per book, as well as pretty much any enchantment in the game such as Protection 4, Sharpness 5, and Unbreaking 3. You can get these prices even lower by curing the villagers from zombification. That's not all. Using villagers you can obtain pretty much any consumable item you'll ever need in game. This includes items such as potion arrows, XP bottles for mending your armor, ender pearls, and high saturation food items such as golden carrots. To get potion arrows you'll need to unlock the final trades of a Fletcher villager. Conveniently, you can trade sticks for emeralds, so you might already have have unlocked these trades simply by obtaining emeralds. You can also get trades for enchanted crossbows and bows as well. XP bottles can be obtained as a high level trade of a cleric villager. If you have mending on your armor and tools, these can be extremely useful. Having stacks of XP bottles available allows you to mend your armor on the go or in a PvP situation where you don't have access to your usual XP farm. You can also get ender pearls from clerics, which can be useful for making a quick escape. Golden carrots are arguably the best food source in the game as they offer better saturation than pretty much any other food item. After trading enough pumpkins with your farmer villager, you can unlock trades for golden carrots. You can also get trades for apples, which can be used to create golden apples, which grant the potion effects regeneration and absorption for a short period of time. Now that you've got food, tools, armor, enchantments, and arrows, what more could you possibly need? Well, if you're in need of building blocks such as clay, brick, and terracotta that are extremely tedious to get by normal means, you're in luck. Mason villagers, created using a stone cutter, offer trades for these items too. Now that you know basically everything you need to know about villagers, it's time to put all of this information together to turn this box of pumpkins into this box of enchanted diamond gear using only villagers. So we're going to grab a few of these pumpkins here and then just start trading them for emeralds. And after a bit of trading, we have turned the entire box of pumpkins into an entire box of emeralds. Now let's look at these prices over here. And I've recently zombified it and you can get one piece of armor for one emerald, except for the chest plate, which is three, but that's still a pretty insane price, so we have that. We can also go over here to a cured toolsmith and get the tools we want, and then we can go to the armorsmith and get the weapons we want. Next up, we're just gonna unenchant all these because the enchantments on these suck. And we have protection four for one emerald, so we'll grab four of those. We have unbreaking three also for one emerald. And then here we have mending. We also need quite a lot of these just because we have a lot of tools and armor to enchant. I went and combined all of this armor here, and I still had two and a half stacks of emeralds left over. So I decided to go to the clerics and get some bottle of enchanting and ender pearls and then I went back over to the farmers to get some golden carrots because these have the best saturation in the game and guess what we still have all of these left because I didn't even factor in what you could do if you zombified and cured all of these villagers but when you do it as you can see you get some pretty insane results congratulations now you know how to use the most OP item in Minecraft go out and break your servers economy hey speaking of Minecraft servers you can build epic cities grow an empire or conquer your neighbors on the new Roland's Empires SMP. Join using the IP Roland.com and the latest release of Java Minecraft, and join the Discord server, link in the description.